This is part 15 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss enabling cores, cross-origin resource sharing in ASP.NET Web API. In our previous video, we discussed how to issue cross-domain AJAX calls by using JSONP. In this video, we'll discuss how to do the same thing by enabling cores, cross-origin resource sharing. First, let's undo what we have done in our previous video. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Within register method of webapiconfig.cs file, let's comment these two lines. We included these two lines to support JSONP format. And within employees.html, let's change data type to JSON. And also in the HTML file, let's change it to JSON. Let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's view this page in the browser. Let's click this Get All Employees button. Notice we don't get anything. Now let's launch Browser Developer Tools by pressing F12 key. Notice we get the same error, which is basically telling that cross-domain AJAX call is not allowed. Now let's see how to enable cross-domain AJAX call by enabling cars. To enable cars, the first step is to install a package that contains support for cars. And that package is Microsoft.ASP.NET dot webapi dot cars. Let's install this package. There are two ways to install this package. We can either install this using NuGet Package Manager console window. We have discussed how to do that in our previous video. So in this video, let's use NuGet Package Manager to install this NuGet package. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's right click on this employee service project, which has got our web API project. And then I'm going to select manage NuGet packages, which is going to open this window. So select browse tab and then search for the package which contains support for cores. So here is the package microsoft.asp.net.webapi.cores and we have that package right here. Select that and click the install button. So this is going to install that package as well as any other dependencies. Package installation successful. Now let's go to webapiconfig.cs. Within the register method, let's create an instance of enable cores attribute. This attribute is present in a different namespace and that is system.web.http.cores. Let's include this using declaration. Let's call the instance cores this attribute has got three parameters. The first parameter is origins. This is a comma separated list of websites that we want to be able to issue cross domain AJAX calls. Now in our case, we want this website to be able to issue a cross domain AJAX call. So let's copy the domain URL and we can specify that here. In addition to this website, if you want another website, for example, prajeemtech.com, then you can include that within the comma separated list like this. If you want to allow all the websites, then include star. That's our first parameter. The second parameter is headers. Again, comma separated list of headers that are supported by the resource. So if you want the resource to support only accept and content type headers, you can include them as a comma separated list. If you want all the headers to be supported, then include star. And the final parameter is the method that is supported by the resource. If you want only to issue cross domain AJAX calls to get method, then just specify get there. In addition, if you want post, let's specify that as a comma separated list. If you want to support all methods, then include star. And then finally, on the config object, call enable cars method and to the method pass the instance of this enable cars attribute. So these are the two changes that are required. Install the package and include these two lines of code in the register method of our web API config class. Let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's reload this page and let's click this button, get all employees. Notice now we get the data as expected. Here 
we have those two lines of code that we included in the register method to enable cars. And here are the parameters of the enable cars attribute, origins, headers, and methods. These two lines of code that we have in our register method enables cars globally for the entire application, that is, for all the controllers and all action methods. Sometimes you may not want to enable cars globally for the entire application. For example, let's say we have got four different controllers within our Web API project and we want to enable cars on only one controller. We can do that using enable cars attribute. Similarly, if you want to enable cars only for a specific action method within a specific controller, you can still do that using the enable cars attribute. Enable cars attribute provides us with that level of flexibility. If you don't want to enable cars globally across your entire application, then don't create an instance of this attribute within register method. There is also no need to pass an instance to the enable cars method. Now we have just prepared our application to enable cars, but at the moment none of the controllers or action methods are enabled for cars. Now if you want to enable only employees controller for cars, then decorate that controller with enable cars attribute. This attribute is present in a different namespace, so let's bring in that namespace. Now cars is enabled for all action methods only within employees controller. Now if you don't want to enable cars for this specific method within the controller, then you can use disable cars attribute. So now cars is disabled for this get method, but it is enabled for the rest of the methods within our employees controller. Enable cars attribute can be applied on a specific controller or controller method. To disable cars for a specific action, apply disable cars attribute on that specific action. Now, let's understand what happens behind the scenes when cars is enabled. Let's clear what we have and issue another request. This request is captured in Fiddler. Let's inspect request and response. Look at the request. Within the request, we have this origin header. The origin header is set to the website that issued the AJAX request. In our case, the website that issued the AJAX request is this website, localhost colon 6293. Notice within the request, origin is set to that website. And within the response, we have this header access control allow origin. It is set to star. Star basically indicates allow access to any website. Now the request is issued by this website and access control allow origin is saying star meaning allow access to any website and that's the reason we are able to see the data. Now this access control allow origin is set to star because we have told we want to enable cars for all websites. Remember the first parameter of enable cars attribute is origins. We have set it to star basically telling allow access to any website that's making the AJAX request. That's the reason why within the response header we have access control allow origin set to star. Now if we set it to prajimtech.com, then cars is enabled only for this website. So that means if we issue a request from this website, you know, the origin will be set to that website. But then within the response, we wouldn't have access control allow origin header. Now when this header is not present within the response, then the browser is not going to allow us to see the response that we get from the server. Let's actually prove that. So let's remove this disable cars attribute because we want to enable cars for this get method as well. Let's give our solution a build now. Build succeeded. Now let's issue another request. Notice immediately we get an error. XML HTTP request cannot load this resource look at the message. It says no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. So basically this is telling it cannot find access control allow origin header in the response. 
So let's inspect this within Fiddler. So here is the response that we got back. Now notice within the response we don't have access control allow origin and look at the request header origin here. It is set to our website which issued the request but within the response we don't have access control allow origin header and that's the reason why browser security is preventing us from seeing the response that we got back from the server. Look at this, the response that we have here it has got the status code 200 OK, meaning the request has completed successfully, but then it is the browser security which is preventing us from seeing this data in the browser because for security reasons, browsers doesn't allow cross-domain AJAX request. For the cross-domain AJAX request to be allowed, it has to find this header, access control allow origin header in the response. Since we don't have that header in the response right here, the browser security is preventing us from seeing the response that we got from the server. Now, if we set origins parameter of our enable cause attribute, to our domain, which is http colon localhost colon 6293, then within the response that we are going to get from the server, we are going to have access control allow origin header set to this website. And we should be able to see the response that we get from the server. So let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's issue another request. Notice we get the data right away and we don't have any error message. Now let's inspect this in Fiddler. Notice within the request we have the origin header set to our website that has issued the AJAX request and within the response notice now we have this access control allow origin header and this is set to the website that has issued the AJAX request. So the browser will look at this response header and it sees, all right, so this website which has issued the request has access to it, so it allows us to see the response that we get from the server. Thank you for listening and have a great day.